Welcome, welcome to Divine Visitation, uh, Reverend Destai Crawford. I'm very, very excited to get back. So um, I've been really, by the grace of God, conducting a lot of prayer. And then in terms of coming from studio preaching, it has been a while, although um, I have been on MTN on a regular basis in three languages. That is a gift of God. Over here, I have this precious man, <laughs> wonderful person that uh, I was introduced by my husband, Jim Crawford. His name is Rich Richard. Did I say that? Yes, Richard. <laughs> yep, Richard. Richard <laughs> Montgomery. Perfect. Oh, <laughs> so no accent? No accent. Okay, wonderful. <laughs> so um, I have an opportunity to meet a lot of people because of Jim Crawford. He's a people person, amazing communicator. So I'm a preacher. So <laughs> if I keep going, you will have no time to talk. <laughs> so I'm going I'm to discipline myself for once. And then uh, please, could you introduce yourself? Sure. My name Whatever is you want to say about yourself. And wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. Well, my name is Richard Montgomery. I am a gospel recording artist and uh, also vice president of my record label, Light Lord uh, Records. Um, I've been singing for years, years, and, uh, and uh, so um, my passion is to just take God's word, put it into music, and lift up the name of Jesus everywhere I go through, his, through the spirit of the gift of music. I mean, isn't that just inc incredible? And I've been really sharing about divine visitation out of this, this studio for over a year. Mm, wow. And when we talk about divine, we think it's something out there, invisible. Uh, that is how we think God is, but God is visible. He yes. created us all after his own image. Yes. So my communication with my audience have been, God is like uh, the, when we breathe air. Mm -hmm. Isn't that divine? Isn't it that is. supernatural? It truly is. So we don't even think about it. Right. The sunlight. We take it for granted. That is supernatural, but that is natural also. This has been my communication, and you being here is divine. That is how I see it. Amen. And I'm really impressed by your testimony. You know, you've been sharing with my husband and I. Mm -hmm. So if, you, uh, if it is word for word, that is fine. Uh, mm -hmm. Please uh, take your time and the testimony about your life, how you became no Christ, and all of that. I don't want to put any word in your mouth, and that would be great. Sure, sure. And by the way, he, next week we're going to come back with one of his songs. His song, uh -uh. right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can't wait. <laughs> 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 so. I, I grew up singing um, R&B music, and um, you know there was always something in me that wanted to wanted to go to church. Um, I, I realized later in life that there was a large portion of my family that uh, grew up in the church, and there were pastors and ministers and worship leaders and so forth. So um, I wasn't connected with that side of the family. So um, I was, you know, I was, I was out there singing for the world, and I remember, um, you know, we, we, were, we had our own publishing company recording studio in Lexington, mm -hmm. Kentucky, and uh, we were going around doing so many different shows and concerts everywhere, and, and uh, we, had a, we had one last concert in 1995, I'll never forget, it was, um, we were looking, we were performing in front of a bunch of record labels mm -hmm. that were going to be there, and one of the biggest hitters was Sony Records at the time. Um, so at the end of our last rehearsal before the show, uh, it was five of us in the group. Hmm. And I was the youngest. We all kind of got around and started speaking to say, well, you know what, if we don't make it, what are we going to do? Hmm. And I was the last one to speak and out of nowhere, I have no clue as to where it came from, but I said, I'm going to take my voice to church. Hmm. Um, I never sung in church before. I think that was God mm. speaking through me at that particular point because we ended up not making it. 
I ended up leaving the group. I left Indiana and I came to Minnesota. And uh, I tried one more time to sing R&B and it just didn't work out and I stopped singing for a while until actually I got into a church. And so I met um, Pastor Jenkins, he's Bishop Jenkins now, who's my current pastor. Hmm. Um, he, I met him at a job when I was working at a dry cleaners downtown. Mm -hmm. And uh, he used to always come by and, and minister, and and, uh, and uh, he knew the owner of the, of the, I'm sorry, the manager of the dry cleaners real well. So I started hiding from him at times when he would come mm -hmm. in. Uh, we had a camera back there that would be looking, and I would be watching through the camera, and I'll see him every time he'd come in, and I'm like, oh, there's Pastor again, so I'm going to stay in the back. <laughs> but it's, it's funny because the camera stopped working. <laughs> <laughs> so I so God was exposing me like okay you want to hide I'm gonna turn the camera I'm gonna make the camera not work and so he came out and well he kept coming to the cleaners and I ended up meeting yeah. him and then something gravitated pulled me towards it led me to his church mm, mm. and so I went my, I ended up going my fiance at the time now wife mm -hmm. um, her and I ended up going to the church for about three months um, I didn't tell anybody I could sing or anything of that nature. I, I you know, just wanted to go. I just had a, a, a yearning and a desire to want to go to church. And so, um, but three months into it, we kind of left because of a misunderstanding. And I went off to another church that was forming. Uh, it was New Life Community, was the name of the church, Pastor George Ellis, who was the pastor that actually married my wife and I. And so, uh, I didn't tell him again I can sing. I was I didn't say anything about it. Uh, but then all of a sudden, hmm. so how, I don't know how we got onto that part where you know I don't know how he knew I can sing or maybe he must have heard me singing or whatnot. But I said, yeah, yeah, I've been singing for a long time. And and uh, he asked me, are you? He said, are you saved? <laughs> I said, oh yeah, I've been saved over twenty <laughs> times now. And he, he times. began to laugh. <laughs> You know, and he said, well, you can only be saved once. I said, oh, okay, I didn't know. I, you know, I thought I was stacking my chips every time I asked for it, so I would just go get saved every Sunday. You know, that, that was the, the young babe in Christ in me. Mm -hmm. Any event, from there, it led me to, I began, I started a youth choir. Mm -hmm. My gifts started to make room for me. Um, I went from a youth choir to a mass choir. Wow. And then from a mass choir to started leading praise and worship. <laughs> and uh, it was my very first experience uh, in church singing. And I liked it. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think at the time there was a lot of still, there was still a lot of entertainment in me. Mm -hmm. It wasn't praise and worship yet. I think God was just kind of molding me at the time. Mm -hmm. um, for four years, I was a part of that church, and then the church disintegrated. Um, so then we were, my wife and I at the time, now we're married, and we were in search of another church. And we visited several churches and just did not, just didn't feel the presence. We just didn't feel it was right for us. Not that they were bad, we just didn't feel it was right for us. And so, um, so out of nowhere, I was in the living room, my wife was in the bedroom. I said, let's, let's go to open door. Just like you said earlier, uh, at the beginning of your journey, right. when you were doing the, I'm just kind of looking at the audience, mm -hmm. you know, we're talking to people here. And mm -hmm. so you um, got that when you were doing producing mm -hmm. music that is not gospel, you heard something. Yeah, and yeah. Then I take my voice. What, what was that again? He said, I'll, I'll take, I said, I'll take my voice I'll, to church. I will take my voice to church. Mm -hmm. And just listening to you, it's very consistent. Mm -hmm. From that to when you're trying to hide. <laughs> 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 now, what you just said, it has been consistent. Um, I'm intentional about really a good interruption to communicate with my audience. So when we hear something uncommon, something we didn't plan, mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm. uh, something that is not in, in our program and plan and mind. I think it's just listening to you, it's very good to pay attention. That may be some divine, yes. some God, God voice that whether we know God, how we, you know, people say God, right? Right. Um, I believe it's good to listen to that and move. That's why you did. Yeah, yeah. That's why you did. Eh? Exactly. Move on. And exactly. You are also just communicating with your audience as, as you speak with me so they would understand this is a consistent call of God. Sure. So move on. Thank you sure. for the <laughs> allowing <Yeah>. me to <laughs> so not cut you off. <laughs> yeah. Just getting that and so opportunity to communicate that. Yep. Yeah. And so it was just, you know, so I heard that. It just came to my head, like, you know, mm. just go to open door. And I didn't know where that came from. I really didn't. It was, I, I truly believe, I, I know now that it was God speaking. Mm. But at the time, I didn't. And so we went back, and it was Pastor Jenkins' church mm -hmm. um, at the time. And so we went back to open door. Now this beautiful new church has been built. Uh, and... I walked through the door, Pastor Jenkins recognized me instantly. <laughs> Brother Richard, <laughs> Brother Richard. I was like, oh, Pastor, how are you? <laughs> and so we sat down and he asked me, he said, well, what are you? He uh, said, well, well, we're just you know, looking for a new church and, and, and stuff like that. And so he invited me, we came and we loved the service. Everything was great. Um, so we went out to a meeting with Pastor Jenkins, mm. my best friend and I and him. And I, I said, Pastor, I have to be honest with you. I, I left the church because of a misunderstanding. That's beautiful, to and be honest. It is. Transparent. It's, you have yeah. to be transparent. That's, that's one of the things that I definitely I live by is transparency. Mm -hmm. um, speak in, be transparent in everything that you do. Speak in mind. Mm -hmm. God is transparent. Mm -hmm. When he speaks mm -hmm. in his word, he's very clear. Yeah. And so I told him what the misunderstanding was. He said, oh, Brother Richard, that wasn't what it was. And, I apologized to him. I said, you know, I'm very, I'm very sorry. He accepted my apology, forgave me, and said, this is what I meant. I said, oh. So I see, he's asked me, what do you do for God? I said, well, I sing. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> he was looking to start a choir really quick. So he thought out I could sing. He was like, yes, yes. Uh, so I started a choir there at Open Door. Mm. We went through a particular, I think I was maybe about six, seven months, and then we went through, my family and I went through a trial, mm -hmm. a really rough trial, and it was, we, we kind of, we lost everything that we had. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we literally became homeless. I had was my wife, and at the time I had a son. I wasn't even a year old yet. Uh, we had to move back home to Indiana to receive help. Mm -hmm. And um, for a year and a half long, I was upset with God mm. because I couldn't understand why he would allow me to go through this. Mm. It, it, it hurt me. And, I, you know, it, it just, it got to a point where I said, I said well, God, well, I'm, I'm doing great here in Minnesota and, and I got a great job. And I got a wonderful family. Why would you, why would you take all this from me? Why? Mm. And... I got mad and angry and I said, you know what, forget it, I'm done. I'm not, I'm done with church. I'm done singing, I'm done with God, I'm done. Um, and I stayed out of church for a while. I was in Indiana. And the longer I stayed out and had that pity party for myself, the, the harder it got, but God was always there. Mm -hmm. So I remember us driving down the street in Indiana and my wife, said something to me. She said, you know what? We don't have much of anything. But somehow we're all, we're, we're taken care of. Somehow we're taken care of. We don't have, we've lost every materialistic piece that we've had, but yet we weren't hungry. We weren't, it, it was just unbelievable. We were taken care of, we were, we were taken care of well as if we weren't not, as if we were not homeless. You would never tell that we were homeless. And my wife, she became pregnant again with my second child, my daughter. And I was like, I can't take care of two kids. I'm like, oh my God, I better take care of the first one. So when she said that, something clicked in my head. I said, okay. I said, you're right. 
You're right, you definitely are. So I kind of, there was a little arrogant spirit in me. I said, okay, God, this way you want me? Fine. I got on my knees and said, God, this way you want me? Fine. And I began to pray. And I began to take time out of every day and just start to pray. And the more I started to pray, the more strong I felt in my spirit. I ended up getting back in church. Went back to singing again. I wasn't where I wanted to be yet, but something, physically I wasn't, but spiritually I was moving in the right direction. And then all of a sudden, I started, the more time I started giving God and I started getting born to praise and worshiping God in my own time, doors started to open. And initially what happened was that we made our way back from Indiana back to Minnesota after a year and a half long trial. <laughs> Minnesota is God so amazing. Doesn't let you go. <laughs> it doesn't, right? It doesn't. <laughs> and what happened was is that if we, if I take it all the way up until now, so I I got back. We came back to open door. Started singing back on the worship team, back in the choir. Initially, what happened is God restored us Ooh. with everything that we lost, and then some, with more. It's amazing. It's really the story of Job. If you think about it, when Job lost everything that he had, God blessed him with more. So you just uh, celebrated how many years? Uh, op op we were there, so. Yeah, um, so Open Door 30, 32, 32, 32 years. years. 32 years. It was such a blessing to be there um, past weekend. Yes. And uh, your, your pastor, you know, we went to school together, my <laughs> husband. <laughs> yes, you told me that. And uh, it's North Central, so. Yeah. You know, many, many years back, and now when we look at each other, you know, it's so <laughs> amazing. I was really blessed, you know, to, to see where, where God is bringing him, blessing him with people like you guys. And I pray that God would continue to be with you guys. Uh, such incredible. So God restored everything. Restored everything so that we lost. Could you speak to audi your audience, our audience, about how God can restore you know, the Bible says we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the, word of, our the word of our testimony. So our testimony, we don't know who can be encouraged as you talk and if, if you want to Listen, I, I just want to, I want anybody who's out there mm. who is, is, is going through any type of trial, one of the things I had to learn is in James 1, it says, Blessed is the man who endure trials of many kinds, for the testing of your faith produces patience. It also states the power of perseverance. And we are, well, the reason why we have to persevere, why? Because it makes us more mature and complete and lacking nothing. When you're going through something, just continue to go through it. Mm -hmm. Stay the course. Be faithful. Faithful. Being faithful is the key. That's what really got me is because I was so faithful. Mm -hmm. When I got back into giving God my all, I was faithful to the call. Mm -hmm. And even though it, it hurt, it's only but for a minute. It's mm -hmm. only but for a minute. If you understand that God is in there with you, mm -hmm. just stay faithful. Just know, keep believing that you know that God is going. When the Bible says the joy of the Lord is my strength, it simply means, what does that mean? Well, it simply means that joy is understanding and knowing God's word mm -hmm. and knowing that he will do what he said he's going to do. Amen. He's provided so many examples in his word. Mm -hmm. And that's what really, that's what kept me. That's what kept me knowing his word. Because like my bishop always says, all I have is the Word of God, and that's exactly what kept me. Mm -hmm. So stay faithful, stay the course, don't give up. Get the Word of God engrafted in you. Stay faithful. Yeah, I really love the way you give this testimony, being transparent. Yes. You know, people usually trying to talk about the highlight, not the low point. Mm. You know, the low point is very important. So. Could you share a little bit about your, um, 
um, album? Yes, yes. So um, I just released my album on uh, June 22nd. Mm -hmm. The album is entitled The Journey. Uh, it is energetic gospel music that will inspire every soul. Um, my album is, is uh, I'm, I'm, it's a, uh, it was 13 months in the making. It took 13 months to put this Ooh. album together. Uh, we, I did the first recording May of 2018. And, you know, the, a lot of work went into this album, going into putting this together. But each and every song was written by me, was arranged by me. Well, I like to say written and arranged by God. <laughs> through you. Through me, okay. It was, <laughs> because I never consider myself a songwriter. Never, <laughs> never. Yeah. But he really, God really downloaded the words into me. And every song, the reason why the album is called The Journey is because each song portrays a piece of the journey from where I came from up until where I am now, to how I got here, to where I am now. Um, and literally every word that I, that I wrote was inspired by God. At different times of a day, I'll be maybe in my office working and then all of a sudden a song lyric would come to my head and I just write it down. Um, I get new music and I'm like, I don't know what this song is going to be about, but then all of a sudden the Lord will bring to my head what the song will be about. Mm -hmm. So it's a really special album to really portray the journey the way I've been. And I tell you now, a lot of people have heard my album and they say it's blessed mm -hmm. them so much. There's a particular song in there that will fit and will talk and speak to anybody in any type of situation in all aspects of life. It really is. So, so do you do a cappella? Like <laughs> I can do. <laughs> you don't want to give away <laughs> yet. I can do. I can do a cappella. <laughs> yeah. There, there's. There, I, I started. I started practicing. A good, my my my, my, my uh, one of my music coaches, vocal coaches, always said, practice a cappella. Ah. Oh. I'm like, why? <laughs> you. I like the music. The music is energetic, <laughs> right? Uh, but she, she said, no, practice acapella. The reason why is because you want to hear yourself. Mm. You want to listen. You want to fine tune yourself, fine tune your ears. So I practice a lot acapella when I sing. Uh, and and I, I still do it to this day. Mm. It's just something that's engrafted in me. But uh, I don't know if any of my songs I can do acapella. Though. Or maybe new even now, right here, right here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if any of my songs I can do I can tell them because uh, the songs are the way they are structured and the way they're written. Uh, but it doesn't we have were, to we be were talking song. about hymns. Mm -hmm. I love hymns. And um, I grew up. I came up. My, my bishop loves hymns too. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, he loves them because they're so jam packed with theology. So one of the hymns that I love is "I Surrender All," mm. um, and a little bit of it. I surrender all, I surrender all, all to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all, all. To Jesus I surrender all to him I freely give I will never love and trust him day in his presence daily live I I surrender all, I surrender all, all to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. 
Oh, thank you <laughs> so much. That is so powerful. Oh, one of my favorites. You favorite. know, I was impromptu. I didn't even ask you ahead of time <laughs> <laughs> if we do a cappella. So praise God. And uh, oh. um, I'm very, very excited about yes. having you back into this studio yes, next yes. week. And we invite you. We invite Please. you to join us. Um, you don't have to be here in person. But if you are in pers here mm -hmm. in person, you're not going to regret. Please so we out. are here at MTN. So next week, by God's grace, he, he, Richard is going to introduce us with his uh, one or two. Yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> of yes. His, his album. Uh, in addition to that, the 21st, the 21st of this month, September 1230, uh, he's going to do... Uh, we're, we're going to have an international, all kind of music. Mm -hmm. uh, Richard is going to be here, which I'm very excited about that. Yes. So before we conclude today, mm -hmm. um, I'm going to read from Psalm 117. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pray a blessing over us. And then uh, if you pray, if you pray for your audience yes. and especially the people who probably similar background, you mm -hmm. know, uh, who probably have been hearing God, maybe not thinking that it is God, you mm -hmm. know, for them to really pay attention to this um, inside voice that is coming once in a while, yes. interrupt us in our life journey. So yes. that would be great. Or you can pray about anything else. You know, sometimes it's the Holy Spirit that prays, you it know. Is, it it's, is, It's very right? dangerous to put prayer in people's <laughs> mouth. So over here, Psalm 117, mm -hmm. praise the Lord. I just love saying that. Mm. I mean, I don't even think I'm so, it's not even a habit. It's just a, an attitude of thanking God for every moment, every life that mm -hmm. he gave us. Over here it says, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles. Um, loud him, all your people, for his his merciful kindness is great towards us. Mm -hmm. And the truth of the Lord endures forever. Mm. Because of God's mercy, because of his grace, yes, because yes. of his endless love, unconditional love, mm. we continue to exist on this planet. Yes. And one thing that God cannot do, he cannot give up on us. As divine as he is, he is already inside of us. Sometimes we're looking for God elsewhere when God is already inside of us, encouraging us, comforting us. So I just love about the mercy of God. I want to pray quick. And then if you uh, close us, that would be great, Richard. Amen. Father God, we thank you for your mercy, your yes, love, God. your ongoing strong love that you have for all humanity. Hallelujah. without neglecting anybody. We thank you for giving us this opportunity, yes, your God. divine time, to be at MTN. Yes, God. God, I look forward how you're going to bless Richard mm, and, you, bl uh, and touch lives through him. In Hallelujah. Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Father God, I just give you glory. Amen. I give you honor. I give you all the praise, God. Father God, I pray that someone today was blessed by the conversation that we had today, Lord. I'd like to pray over our listening audience in the name of Jesus that someone, Father God, would hear the message that was spoken through the word today. I pray that they be not only hearers of the word, but doers as well, Father. Father God, that someone may hear what was being spoke, what thus said the Lord on tonight. Pay attention how important it is to pay attention to your word, to pay attention to the voice of God when you're speaking. God bless the audience. Amen. Bless their lives. I pray over their Amen. lives, their families, their jobs, Amen. every aspect of their life, Father God. I just ask that you touch them and be with them, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And use me, use me as your vessel, God. To portray your word through the spirit of the gift of music. Amen. God, I just honor you and I'm so humble. I'm so, I, I just can't thank you enough, God, for what you've done for me 
and what you're going to do through me and what you're going to do for your, your listening audience, your people. Now, Father, as we leave here today, but never from your presence, give us all mercy and grace. It's in your name, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you for coming thank and you look so forward for to me. host you again next week. Yes. And uh, thank you. Uh, pray for us. Yes. And uh, we look forward to present what we have Amen. next week. God Same bless time. You.